thank you so much for coming back to the channel. We are here today with our friends, Brian and Aaron from Five to Go, and we are excited to be able to kind of hook up with them to bring you guys this video today because they recently purchased a Class A Fleetwood RV, <laughs> and we have a Class A Fleetwood RV. And so we wanted to kind of show you guys today some of the differences between our two Fleetwoods. And one of those main differences being ours is a diesel and theirs is a gas engine. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what some of those differences are and why we each decided to go the way that we went for our particular rigs. So make sure that you head over to their channel at five to go and we'll put the link below so you can see the entire video where they're gonna talk completely about why the they chose the rig that they did plus they've got some really cool walkthroughs of their new rig over on their channel as well that you don't want to miss out so make sure you head over there after you finish this one to check out what they've got on their channel Brian from Five to Go, yep. and we wanted to just meet up and talk a little bit about the differences between his brand new well, gas 2016, 2016, yep. and our older diesel, and kind of understand the differences between the two. What are the pros? What are the cons of each ones? And uh, so we're going to go over that. It's with you now. Kind of a kind of a hot debate on the internet. <laughs> it's a it lot of diehard diesel pushers. Yep. A lot of diehard gas guys, you know, gas guys. I think I just made that up. <laughs> gas guys, right. I'm a gas yeah. guy. <laughs> so we're going to kind of dissect these a little bit for you guys and dig into each one and show you the pros and cons. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of you guys are probably looking for uh, in researching what rig is going to mm -hmm. be best for you and for your family. And really, it all depends on what is going to fit your needs, really. So. Yeah, and just throwing this out there real quick, motorhomes are pretty much new to us. Uh, we are full timers from a while back. We actually left and went full time in 2017. But with that, we were in a truck and travel trailer for two years. So then we were here in Colorado for a year, wanted to get back out there. So we ended up with a class A, not ended up, we chose a class A. Um, so, but, but motorhomes are still pretty much new to us. We just really started researching them earlier this year. So there's a lot of things about diesel pushers we don't really know because we weren't really looking at them, mainly because of cost. So I'm, I'm really interested to learn some more about this. Right, and you wanted the bunks too, right? That was the biggest nope, reason. we don't have or, bunks. Or you don't have bunks? Nope, don't okay. have bunks. <laughs> Got it. And we'll get into that more on our channel over at Five to Go. Yes. Um, that's, uh, that is kind of a lot of people were like, because we have three kids, three smaller kids, so bunks would be perfect, right? We really don't like bunkhouse models. So uh, yeah, and with motorhomes, we had a bunkhouse travel trailer, but with motorhomes, there's a lot of reasons we don't like those. And we'll cover those on our channel uh, at a, in a future date. So make sure you subscribe over there and you'll find out more about that. Absolutely. All right, so, so what are we talking about first? So first thing is, let's since we're in the front, let's yeah. talk about the engines. We <laughs> yeah. should maybe- There we go. I wonder. <laughs> now it's we're like, representing. Now we're representing <laughs> our rigs. So on our rig, our engine is in the back as it's called the diesel pusher. So where's your engine? Uh, ours is right here. That's my engine. And that this is the hood. This tiny little thing right here just kind of flops out. Uh, so this is the hood and then all of the big expensive parts are right there. Okay. So when it comes to noise, like what would you say, like how loud is it? So you're sitting um, up front. And yeah, I'm so sitting right on top of the engine and uh, it it's definitely there. Like you definitely know it's there, especially when you're accelerating uphill, it gets a little bit loud. But um, my daughter, my oldest daughter rides in the front. She rides shotgun with me. We can have a conversation, no problem. Like, is it loud? Yeah, sure, there's noise, but it's, it's not, stuff. yeah, but it's really not, you know, we're not yelling at each other. It's not droning out, making you mad. You know, cause last month I flew down to Florida and drove this thing 2000 miles back. Not a problem. I didn't, it, it didn't make me deaf on the way back. It's really not that bad. Got it. Yeah, and ours is in the back. So one uh, downside about it being in the back is that to get to the engine, you do have to pull apart the bedroom um, yeah. and pull everything out just to access the engine compartment. Um, so this is our bedroom area. So big. And then um, our closet, which we have a nice big closet. Yeah, you do. 
but the one downside about uh -oh. having the closet in a diesel is because the engine's back here. Okay. So anytime that there is engine work that needs to be done, all of everything in here, all of it. How do you get to the engine? Well, is it like under? Oh. This floor has to come out, like literally. So, oh, so you'd literally have to take everything out. Underneath here, like oh so literally gosh. everything in here, like the dresser that we have, mm -hmm. like, you know, these that are hanging here, all of the clothes, like this whole closet oh my goodness. has to be emptied out. So when we broke down in Arizona, mm -hmm. I had to empty the entire closet and it all ended up on the bed. Right. And then we had to take these closet doors off uh -huh. so that the mechanic could get to the engine itself. So that is the one thing that's a pain about having the engine in the back. So there's no access and like outside? There's there's very limited access outside. Okay. So like they can get to like the fuel filter outside mm -hmm. or like change the oil, but like when what happened with us is we broke the belt. Oh. So you they have to get like down. So up in they there. have to get yeah, they have to access the top of the engine. So mm -hmm. it's the only way to do it. My goodness. So that the is closet though is so big, you could it make is. that into like a bunk room. You almost could. You if really you wanted the children could. so close. Yes. Right <laughs> next to us. Yeah. But it is. It's big. I I mean, I know people that have even made like little offices. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. in these spaces because it is so big. And then mm -hmm. even on this side of the closet, you know, it goes back mm -hmm. in here further. So it's definitely roomy from that perspective. Um, but up front, it's really quiet because the, the engine's in the back. So you don't hear anything when it comes to the engine. But again, like I was saying to him earlier, is you do hear some of the noises mm. um, from the rig because it, you don't have the engine noise. Yeah. So how is the, so. Uh, how's the wind noise? Because I don't really hear it because I hear the engine. Yeah. So this is a so, big flat plane for the air to be hitting. Right. Yeah, and we don't hear a lot of the uh -huh. engine. We do get a little bit of noise from here, some whist yeah. whistling. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, and then, of course, the kids in the back. Right. You know, there's oh. that whole thing but uh, other than that it's really quiet as you're going down the road yeah okay and another uh thing just because we're standing here you have this kind of like bra like right. this kind of reminds me of a car bra like ones that you yeah. would snap onto the front of a car yeah ours just has like a clear coat supposedly a clear coat rock shield so i haven't hit anything yeah. so but that's yeah interesting but you wouldn't be able to do this really on the gas because you gas. need the airflow right because my radiator is right there in the front so right. you could do this, but it would have big holes in it. So kinda, yeah. what's the point? So on this diesel, there is an air quick connect. So Ooh. you can hook up a hose to it nice. and air up your tires. So I bought a long hose on Amazon. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, but you can hook it right up and blow up any of your inner tubes. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the pressure goes well above 100 PSI. So nice. that is a nice little Yeah, and that's because feature. of the air ride system? Exactly. That, yeah, that's something so, we don't have on the gas. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it taps right into that. So you can just plug it in real quick and air up your tires. <laughs> Um, blow off, you know, any anything off of your rig. Right, yeah. or, and I so. guess you could use it for the toad too, because you have exactly. a Jeep. So you could just bring the Jeep up front, air yeah. up the tires. Nice. Absolutely. Like yep. Cool. When it comes to the towing capacity of the diesel, we can pull about 10,000 pounds. So I pull my Jeep. Yeah, um, yeah our, ours tops out around 5,000. So could I pull a Jeep? How much does a Jeep weigh? It's it's right around forty six hundred. Oh, so you that's could... really close then. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to be pulling a C Max, which is about thirty two hundred. So not that bad at all. It's not hooked up yet. I got to install all that junk on the front. <laughs> got it. Nice. So with the diesel, you can hook up several ways. One is the way we have it hooked up. We have a Blue Ox, and. Uh, what it does is presses on the brake it uses inertia so as you press on the brake it detects you're slowing down and then it presses on the brake in the jeep and there's yeah. like a big module sitting on yeah. the floor that pushes yeah. on the brake yeah. it's a little bit of a pain because sometimes when you're going over bumps and, and it, it gets rocky it does go off and you have to pull over and you were saying something that you can do with a diesel pusher you can tap into the airlines right to actuate some kind of module 
Yeah, you, you can, it's called an Air Force One, so hmm. you can tap right into the air lines. So when you do tap on the brakes, it will um, use that force to press the brakes in the toad. So that's kind of cool. Let us know in the comments down below. Is that a safer option? Is it a cheaper option? Is it just an option? Like, is there is there some advantage to tapping into that airline to do that? You know, is that something that Ben should do? Should he overhaul this? Right. Yeah, <laughs> do you go. need to spend more money on this? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so we were talking about one drawback of the diesel versus gas is when we were traveling up uh, Monarch Pass, we were overheating. So we've got the engine in the back, radiators in the back. So yeah. you don't have as much airflow coming through cooling the engine. Yeah, because so. if you think about like a normal vehicle, like on the Jeep here, you have the radiator right there in the front. So as you're driving down the road, you've got all that air plowing into that radiator, helping cool everything down, that heat exchange that the radiator does. Yeah. With it in the back, it's kind of hiding, you know, the air is going this way and the radiator's back in here. So it's kind of like, right. they have little scoops and Ben was saying some have side radiators, but this one, it's all the way in the back. So you're not getting near as much air as you would with it being up in the front. Right. So it's kind of, I was always kind of wondered about that. So that's kind of, Another thing to consider, I suppose, especially if you drive in hot environments or high altitudes a lot. Right. Although diesel pushers are better going up mountains. It's one of yep. the things they're known for. They do have a little bit more torque, so yeah. it'll crawl up a mountain, no problem. You can't really even tell the Jeep is behind the, nice. the rig, which yeah, is I have nice. a feeling when I hook up the car, I'm definitely gonna know it's back there. All right, so let's talk about maintenance. Uh, one downside about the diesel pusher is the maintenance cost can be nearly double mm. than a gas engine. We have nearly 12 gallons of oil that we have to put in um, the rig. We have glow plugs that can potentially uh, go out mm. on it and, and those are very expensive. So that is one drawback behind a diesel pusher. Yeah, yeah, and there's also fuel issues too, right? And right. and another thing we were talking about, when I started driving in the 90s, I swear that diesel fuel used to cost less in the summer because there was less right. demand for like heating oil and then in the winter it would go back up. I don't feel like I've seen that in the last decade or so because it's almost always, diesel's always more expensive than normal gas. So, yep. so even that, you know, we get about the same miles per gallon, right. but your fuel, kind of cost more across the board no matter where you are yeah so there's that too yep that adds up exactly <laughs> especially exactly. when you got a hundred gallon tank or <laughs> yeah yep same fuel uh mileage but the diesel fuel does uh run a little dirty so mm. you do have to keep the oil changed uh, on a regular basis and, and if you don't fuel filters too. yeah you have uh, performance issues if you do not uh, change those out on, yeah. a, on a regular basis yeah and so. i think uh when we were full-timing in the truck and travel trailer we got bad diesel once Really? That was bad. Oh, we man. had to have it siphoned oh, out. Yeah. That's a process. Yeah. I've never, itself. never run into that with gas. So yeah. that's just another thing. And also diesel gas pumps are filthy. You ever notice that? They're yes. always filthy. Right. Why are they, they so are. dirty? They are. <laughs> it's like every that time you touch them, you're like, oh, yeah. it's like all grimy. Yeah. I wear gloves every single time. Oh, what so. is up with that? Yeah, but, I don't know. But you have the, uh, uh, what is it, the high capacity pumps? Yes. Oh, yep. they're so lovely. I miss that. Yes, the yeah. high capacity pumps. And one thing about the diesel is there's a filler cap on both sides. That's so awesome. as you pull up to the pump, um, you can see right where the pump is on the left side. If you pull in the middle, there's always access to both sides mm -hmm. as well so that's awesome all right you want to hand yeah. it off to the ladies yeah let's hand it off to the ladies all right so another thing that is just a little bit different in ours mm -hmm. versus what you guys have is your the door exit and entrance yeah so yeah that's the only way in it is the only way in and out other than you know if you take out the right emergency <laughs> window exit <laughs> so you you can't really use this as like a it's Living not, space. yeah, I mean, it's a little bit harder. The seats, mm -hmm. of course, flip around when we're just, you know, parked right, and right. stationary like most Class A's will do. Um, but it is a little bit more difficult to use this more functionally because mm -hmm. if somebody is sitting here, it's you're going to have people that are going to be tripping over you, you right. know, going in and so out. You don't have a rig. table here like we do. There's not a table okay. here um, like that you guys are able to have mm -hmm. because but your ingress and egress, gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the door being there. So um, that is one thing that's a little bit different. And then, you know, I would love to get some sort of workstation to where we could, you know, put utilize it over, it. yeah, mm -hmm. over the steering wheel and utilize that that way, just because we don't have the option to have yep. 
you know, a table or whatever with the door being right there. Would that be something you would look for in the future, or is it not a deal breaker? I mean, obviously, it's not a deal breaker. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not a deal breaker, but I think it's nice to have. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is really nice to have when you have, you know, these two chairs here, and especially, mm -hmm. you know, with both of us working online, to be able to have a place to put your laptop and right. kind of set up as a workspace. But, I mean, there's obviously workarounds and ways around it. Yeah. Um, and it just really depends upon what your needs are, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it is, that is something that I do like about what you guys mm -hmm. have is that option to have that. It's kind of neat. It's a cool rig though. Thanks. For sure. I like, like it. So we were gonna finish up this video yesterday with Brian and Aaron and they were just gracious hosts and had us over to their house for dinner and a few drinks and before we knew we lost track of time because we were having such a good time. So tonight we wanted to return the favor and have them out to our rig for dinner and have a few drinks out here so that's what we did so to just kind of sum up some of the things that we were able to do which was a lot of fun talking with them about why that they chose a class a with a gas engine mm -hmm. and then um, why we ended up making the choice that we did as far as having a diesel engine and so um, one of the main reasons that we decided we wanted to go with the diesel engine was because we just wanted a quieter ride in the front. Um, we also wanted a little bit more ability for towing because we do tow a vehicle behind us. It's not super heavy, but we just wanted that extra payload. We have some bikes. We just wanted to be able to have that capacity in case that we ever needed it for anything in the future and just thinking futuristically. And then we also chose one that was a little bit older. It's a 2004, so it is 16 years old now. But with it being a diesel, we were able to get into it at a little bit lower price point because it was older. And then also as far as just depreciation, it's kind of leveled out on that depreciation as far as how much it depreciates in a given year is a percentage of the overall value. So that's part of the reason we chose something a little bit older. And then the other thing is, is that we're not 100% full time, we're part time. And so for us, you know, this is a, this is a second home. It's not a first home, like with Brian and Aaron, where they're full time. Full -time. And this is their, this is their first home, their second home. I mean, this is their, their home. home. <laughs> it's their only home. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's why we also went with something just a little bit older, because, you know, we're in it for, gosh, you know, three, four months out of the year, but we're not in it 12 months out of the year. Like right. these guys will be in theirs. So that's kind of why we made that choice to go with, you know, the diesel versus gas and then also something a little bit older versus a little bit newer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So those the, diesel engines last forever. Yeah. They so, do. So they're yeah. just, oh, they're broken know. in at a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just yeah. I don't know if I would, if I would get a gas motorhome that old with Right. More than twenty or thirty thousand miles on it because yeah. I don't know. Not the <laughs> yeah. same. So no, right. you really when it comes to diesel, you want to go older because the older ones are a little more solid. They last a long time. Like these have wood like real wood cabinets mm. and so and they're pre death. So you don't have to deal with all the emissions and all yeah, that. And we went over that. That was so. one of the important reasons we chose an older diesel mm. was to not have to deal with the extra components that are on a newer diesel. Right. Yeah. As far as the emissions are concerned, I have a background in the automotive industry. And so I just have a very good understanding of some of the things that that can bring to the table, um, how things can be a little bit more problematic for some of those newer systems that have all of these extra emission components that are then added to it. It's just more to break. Exactly, <laughs> and we didn't want to deal with that. So yeah. that's another reason that when we were looking for diesel, we wanted something that was older. And what year? That was 2011, 10 or 11? It was right Death around, was... it was between, it was like on the cusp of eight and nine, oh, okay. eight, oh, nine. Okay. It yeah. just depends upon the manufacturer, okay. so but for sure, for one, yeah, okay. for sure you'd oh, want to go like, oh, eight older. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, you might be able to find an 09, depending upon when it was actually assembled, that is kind of pre the particulate filter, pre death fluid, because um, those are the two big pieces mm. that are on the newer ones for emissions okay. reasons, yeah. 
that are most problematic on a diesel. And so yeah. we don't have to worry about any of Anymore. that. Yeah. There's yeah. basically two engine yeah. manufacturers for the diesel. You've got Cummins or you've got a, a Caterpillar. Cat. Yeah, we've and got a cat so in ours, there's but. pros and cons to both. Just do your research if you're you know looking at something or considering something. We have a cat. Yep. Um, it's been fairly trouble free. We've only had one small minor issue with it. Yeah. Um, and of course maintenance and yeah. same with your guys's rig mm -hmm. too, whether it's gas or diesel, maintenance is always going to be your friend to help prevent yes. any sort Absolutely. of breakdown. <laughs> it's not your financial friend though. Right. No, no. <laughs> right. it's not. Sad, How many sad. miles are on this? It has 25 on it now, 25,000 yeah. Oh it. my gosh. Yeah. And, <laughs> actually, when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at a diesel engine, I mean, you don't want to buy a an older diesel with very low miles because that means it, 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 it sat for, <laughs> bug. Oh, that spider. <laughs> yeah. Um, that means it sat for a long time and there's you're gonna it's gonna present you with a lot more issues. Yeah. So you, you want one with some miles on it, so. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely helpful. But a huge, huge thanks to Brian and Aaron from Five to Go. Yes, yes thank if you. If you are not subscribed to their channel or following them on YouTube and on Instagram, you need to head over there and do that as soon as you're done watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. They've got tons of good content. Yeah. Awesome. They've channel. been at this longer than we have. And so they have a ton more experience. And so <laughs> they've got a lot of great videos that you need to go check out um, when it comes to RVing and RV life and all of those things. And your life with kids so make sure that you go check them out when you're done watching this video all right make sure you subscribe to these guys yeah <laughs> yeah if you haven't already you subscribe you've watched the whole video go subscribe awesome, awesome. well thanks guys thanks, take guys. care we'll bye see you out there bye there's one more thing that i have that you don't I'm scared all my children, so. <laughs> see what my I don't know. Sounds like. Let's see what it sounds like. Beep, beep. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I'm not waking up the dead. Right. <laughs>